You dropped your second, I believe, mock draft for Complex.com today. I'm right on second, right? This is your Mm -hmm. number two? Yep, second. Pittsburgh Steelers land Joey Porter at pick 17. Very interesting. Before we talk that, I want to ask, was it an easy decision to make the shocking move at pick number one? Because as soon as I opened it up, I knew who was going to be there. Like I just had, I just had an idea, but I didn't expect the team to pick them. For those of you who don't know, it's Anthony Richardson headed to the Colts. Did, did you, was that in your head the whole time? Did you have to really contemplate that? How did that come out? It was was really tough. I've been trying to figure out like who the Colts, like best fit would be. And I really think that they would lean towards like Richardson or Stroud. And I don't know, man, I I just feel like, um, you know, regardless of what Chris Ballard's saying to the media, I really do feel like that he's going to have to get aggressive here. Like, I don't know if he's going to feel comfortable staying at four um, and then seeing which of, you know, the last two quarterbacks probably are going to fall to him. So, um, yeah, I I definitely think they'll, they'll like Richardson. Um, The reason why, um, I like I like Richardson's fit for the Colts is really I just feel like he does a lot of the same things that Hertz can do, um, which is, you know, they've got uh, Shane Steichen over there now as their head coach. Um, You know, Richardson's a talented deep ball guy. Um, He throws with pretty good accuracy down the field. um, And obviously he's a freakish athlete, so uh, can do some of the similar things that Hertz can probably do in the run game in terms of like the zone read stuff, the quarterback power stuff. Um, I don't think Florida's offense really took advantage of a lot of his strengths, um, but there's a lot of downfield passing in that offense, which kind of gave him, you know, the opportunity to shine. So if his strengths there, but Richardson's got some stuff that he really has to work on, you know, the mechanics in his lower body are kind of a mess. And that's why his accuracy, like particularly like underneath is really bad. Yeah. Um, but he does some stuff that I really value, like that probably like most people don't um give him credit for just in terms of like manipulating the pocket like he's really good at avoiding sacks like he deals with pressure pretty well um those things translate to the next level like at the next level you're gonna deal with pressure you're gonna have to you know get out of there um avoid sacks and i I like the way that he's able to manipulate the pocket so yeah yeah. i'm uh i was i was look at i'm not shocked i like anthony richardson i think he's the best quarterback of the group just because there's so much upside there. Like people are freaking out about, oh, well, Bryce Young's so fine tuned. Yeah, he's 11 pounds. CJ Stroud has his pounds. inconsistencies. And then Will Levis, I'm just not, I'm not impressed by Will Levis. He's a, he's a good quarterback, whatever. Pick him up at eight and feel fine about it. He's not the first pick in the draft. Anthony Richardson is shooting for the stars. I'm all about that life. I would like it to be an indie because I like Indy. I don't mind Indianapolis. I think I just like Indianapolis, the city. I always have a great time. Out combine, there. man. Combine. Combine. Yeah, like the phenomenal <laughs> steaks. Um, I, I discovered some some bar that does karaoke and 50-cent beers. 50-cent beers and karaoke in one night. Crazy. I think it's called like the Angry Beaver or something. So the free plug to Angry Beaver. I'll be there mm. every year until I die. Let's go to the Steelers. 17. Joey Porter Jr. Ahead of him, Christian Gonzalez goes, what, sixth to the Lions, I believe? And mm-hmm. then Devin Witherspoon goes to the Patriots at 16, 17? 14, 14. 14. Then it's Joey Porter Jr. at 17. And after him, there's actually two more corners before Keely Ringo is selected. I believe it's the second one's Cam Smith. The one before that is, oh, Deontay Banks, obviously, from Maryland. I mean, I think that's a little bit of a change from what a lot of people are expecting. People are talking about Joey Porter Jr. is never going to make it. Keely Ringo might not even make it. The Steelers might have to pick between Banks, Julius Brents. They might have to wait till 32. How did it come down to Joey Porter Jr. falling to 17 and the Steelers landing him? Yeah, I mean, I personally was kind of in between whether I was going to choose Banks or Porter. Um, I kind of just went with even the more... at 17. Yeah, I kinda... both of them there. Yeah, I kind of just went with more of. Um... I guess, conventional wisdom, you know, knowing how that they, you know, the things that they value, uh, the continuity aspect of it with him being local and obviously really familiar with him. But, you know, don't sleep on banks, man. I I, I keep telling people, and I, I really, I know a lot of people, uh, everybody's been tweeting me because I've been tweeting a bunch of clips and putting out a lot of stuff on banks since the combine in particular. But 
everybody's been tweeting me like, hey, we need to get this guy at 32. And like, dude, I just I don't think he's going to be there. I mean, that's the number one thing I hate hearing from people on Twitter is like every time I tweet a clip of somebody that's like, unfortunately, he won't be there. Like everyone has this crystal ball where they yeah, just yeah. know. But I really I just I've watched a lot of players in this class. Like, I think I'm like up to like three plus games on like 75 plus guys now easily. So I've watched a lot of players. I don't think there's. 20 guys that are better than banks is man like just in terms of traits i just i, I think he's really good and i, I would Do you think he's better than joey porter jr i like i like him better than porter yeah Ooh, I, I would have him that's a controversial higher. take right there yeah, i'm not saying i, I disagree with that i'm just saying that's a controversial yeah. take what makes him better i think he's more versatile um you know they both like to play that step kick technique at the line of scrimmage they both are like can be physical porter more so than banks but um you know, I think Banks' build, you know, he's that height, weight, speed guy, super athletic. I just – I think he's more versatile. Like, he can play from a pedal. Like, I've watched him do so many different things for Maryland. I mean, you know, he can play press coverage, you know, press man. Uh, but he can also, like, play quarters from, like, depth. Um, you know, he's he's functional in zone, but I really trust him in man coverage. And they have some similar weaknesses, too. Like, I don't think – either one of them have good ball skills like I think they're actually uh kind of bad but which th that's the only thing I don't know like trying to peg that for the Steelers like I don't know how they're going to look at corners because all the boxes that they check like the press man skills that like they check a lot of those boxes both those guys um are functional tacklers like they're not yeah. guys that'll shy away from contact uh playing the run but neither one of them have the ball skills, man. I just, I wonder if like how that's going to, how high that is on their list of things like traits wise that they're going to look for in this next cornerback. Cause Banks or Porter really don't have that. That's why I would love Witherspoon probably is like the best fit because I think he may check that box, even though he's made, he's not the athlete that Banks is though. What do you, do you like that him over those two? Because you just tweeted out. I don't like him. Ago, I don't like, like Witherspoon no. might fall to 17. There's there's definitely – look, Witherspoon is incredibly technically refined, and he's okay. versatile. All the box are checked with him. I just want to see what he runs. I, I, I'm curious because I think he's a 4-5 or five guy, and he, oh. with how technically refined he is, um, it's not a problem for me because he's really twitchy. Um, but I just don't think the long speed is that great. It, I really do think he's like a four four eight four five two guy, which is perfectly fine. Um, but I'm just curious, and I, I don't know if we're going to get the same run. I don't think we are going to. But he's got the best it. tape. He does have the best tape of any corner in this class. He has better tape than Gonzalez. Gonzalez is just an unbelievable athlete. Like I like yeah. Gonzalez's tape too, but like he's just an unbelievable athlete. They, he's not comparable to Witherspoon in that regard. So yeah, I think Gonzalez is going to be the first one off the board. There's just such limited questions about him. Um, I'm falling into the Deontay Banks thought the four, the four, three, five got me. Like you run a four, three, five immediately. He's just like, I'm like, all right, well, that's just way too fast to be as big and physical as he is. I like Joey Porter, but I've been cautious about Joey Porter just because you've made me cautious about Jordy, uh, jo Joey Porter, excuse me. You've, you know, kind of wavered that, uh, concern early in this process, there's questions about Emmanuel Forbes. I think he's very tiny, but do you think they could double dip? I think that's where that leads to is if they go Joey, Joey Porter at 17, do you see them coming back in those first three or four picks and getting somebody else that maybe is better at ball skills and could go up and get those, those picks like Forbes, you know, or like, yeah. I guess Brent's, but he's, he's going to be gone at 32. I think he'll be gone or by 49. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's tough to like weigh those guys. I think for for Forbes, man, like I was asking around on Twitter this and I did a lot of research, but like there's just not 166 pound corners in the league. Dude, like, there's zero. The there's boundary. like there's like, literally zero of them. I mean, it's so hard to find. Like he does a lot of things well. Like Forbes, like he'll throw his weight around. Like he, yeah, he that's throws great. his weight around, he'll tackle, like he has excellent anticipation. He's instinctual. Like he's obviously a playmaker. I think he's the NCAA record holder for pick sixes. There's a lot to like with his tape. He's fast. He, I mean, he's incredibly fast, but like he weighs like, you know, he's a paperclip. So I just um, predicting how that's going to survive out there on the boundary. It's, it's tough. Like 
this class has so many outliers, man. Like, you know, you look at like Forbes, his weight, like Trey Hodges, Tomlinson, like he's really tiny. Bryce Young, he's a great prospect, but he's really tiny. Clark Jordan, Phillips. even like Clark Phillips, like he's not, he didn't test yeah. really like an NFL athlete. It's Jordan Addison's really, really light. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. And like, that's what I tell people all the time. Like, obviously the tape is what matters more than anything else. But like, man, you can only bet on so many outliers. Like not all of these outliers are going to hit. Like it's hard enough. Like most, most draft prospects just don't work out, but like, you just got to be really careful about betting on all these outliers. And like, that's what Forbes for me, like there's so many other cornerbacks. I just, I like a lot to where, I'm just not super, super interested in him, at least like early on and like that top, those top couple picks. I just, I'm not super interested in him just because I think that there are better players. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's the, the tossing your weight around thing is great, but it's the same concern with Bryce Young. I don't care about how hard you could hit somebody. How hard can you get hit before there's an issue? Well, that's, that's the thing too. Like Forbes is obviously incredibly fast too. Like I think he ran like a four, three, six or something yeah. like that, but Banks Banks ran the same 40 time and he's 35 pounds heavier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and three inches taller. <laughs> like yeah, it's ridiculous. So yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not, it's not about it, it's not about can you run into somebody full speed? It's how many times can somebody run into you full speed? That's much bigger than anybody you've ever played against so far. And you know, because like what if say they're playing the Ravens and for some reason he is eight yards away from a full speed Patrick Ricard. You're telling me he's gonna he's gonna survive that hit? He's That's not. A tough spot. That's, That's what I'm a tough saying. Spot. That's that nine times out of ten, that guy's not getting up. And it's just I, I I see the concern there. Uh, so who do you have them if if they did double dip? I don't remember what in your last mock draft did you only had one corner? I only had one corner. Yeah. Them, them not having like another fifth or sixth round pick due to trades kind of kind of hurts the possibility of yes. like double dipping. In my opinion, and just like all the different needs, like. That's the thing. We can get into like free agency too, but free agency will give us a good idea on like, you know, where the bigger holes kind of are still on the roster to the point where they may be able to double dip depending on what they're able to get done in free agency. But um, like, for example, if Sutton comes back, you don't need to double dip. I mean, I, this class is so good that I, I would definitely like to, but you know, say you have your starters, um, you know, you've got Cam Sutton, you got Levi Wallace, um, I'm assuming they're probably going to bring back Arthur Millette. Too. No, no, I, I actually, I can you don't tell think you from so? a pretty good source that they're not going to bring back Arthur Millette. Interesting. Arthur, Arthur Millette, it's more of Arthur Millette isn't going to come back to the Steelers unless they toss him a bag, okay. but they're not That's going to. I don't know. So, I mean, they're going to need, I mean, they would still need a slot corner. They would still need a slot corner. Brian so Branch, maybe cough, cough. Or maybe a guy like later in the draft, like uh, Keetra Clark from Louisville. That would be an interesting name. That would be a on good day one. three if you want to. But double I still dip. think you could go sign somebody possibly. 